I added mod support to my game Project Impulse, which if you haven't heard of is a VR movement shooter that you can wishlist on Steam right now. I created the system using Unity's addressables and mod.io for the content delivery. It allows players to download the editor from my GitHub, create custom maps in the editor, and finally upload it to mod.io for other players to enjoy. There are very little resources on addressables, so I wanted to showcase how I use them in this video. The first step is actually getting the addressables package. So go to your package manager, under Unity registered addressables, go ahead and install it. Once it's completed, you'll need to go to Windows, Asset Management, Addressables, and Groups, and it'll come up with this window saying that you need to create the settings. Hit that button, and it'll create the Settings panel. Once you've created the settings, head to Windows, Asset Management, Addressables, and Settings. There's a couple things you'll need to change here, such as clicking Build Remote Catalog, setting Build Paths to Local, setting Unique Bundle IDs, and creating a custom Monoscript Bundle Naming Prefix. I just set mine to my project's name, Project Impulse. You'll then need to change your local group settings. So right click on the local group, inspect group settings, make sure that build and load paths are set to local again, and make sure that all these settings are the same. There's a couple of ways that you can build addressables. The first is going to the addressable group, adding some kind of prefab material or scene to the local build group, and then going to build new build and build default script. I don't do this and I use an editor script because there's a lot of custom things that I need to do before I actually export these addressables. Like the first is I need to set the build target. If you're building for Windows, the build target needs to be set to Windows, or if you're building for Android in this example, you need to set the build target to Android. If you don't do this, then the addressables will simply not work. Then we need to actually build the addressables. So we've set the target and then we go to our build addressables. The first thing is we want to find our default local group, which is set by default by Unity. And then what we need to do is we need to get the GUID of whichever assets we want to add to this build group. For this example, I am adding the scene path. Then what I want to do is I want to get all of the entries in the current group that we found and remove them so we're working with a clean entry group. Then we want to create a new entry. We want to set the label to map which you can do in here by going to labels, using the cog, and creating a new label. And then we want to actually move that entry into our group with this code here. The next thing that we need to do is we need to set the load path and the build path. In my case, I set the load path to be the persistent data path. And this is really useful because on different platforms such as Mac, Linux, Windows, or Android, they all have one of these persistent paths. Then we want to go to the mods directory, and then we go to this local file name, which is a temporary variable that I use to replace at runtime, which we'll show later on in the video. And then at the end, we have the selected target, which is going to allow us to build two different platforms such as Windows, Linux, or Android. And in our build path, again, we have the persistent data path, but instead of using that local file name, we're just gonna set it to the current map name. You can find this persistent path on Windows by going to percent app data percent and then going to app data local low going to your company name in my case Dunion Tech the project name project impulse and then to the mods folder and you'll see that we have two mods currently installed one using some kind of dynamic name and the other using the map name that I've exported with. And inside we have the Android platform and the Windows platform, as well as a configuration file that I've added for my own uses. And then finally, we have the actual building process. So let's see what that looks like for Project Impulse. If we go to the map exporter, we can import a map build for Windows. It'll do some verifications. And as you can see, it's building the addressables. And as you can see, Turbine by VR Chris has been created with the addressables inside. One thing that I want to talk about is the local file name. The reason why we have this local file name with brackets is so that we can replace it at runtime. If we go ahead and go into the JSON file of the catalog, you'll see that the local file name is here and we can actually go through this file, change it, save it, and then we can dynamically change the load path at runtime. So we've created all of the addressables that we need, and now we need to actually load them into the game. So I have an install custom maps function here, which goes into the persistent data path slash mods folder, and basically gets every single path within it. So in this example, it would get every single file in this folder. 
Then we're going to do this install custom map from path. And this is going to create some map data. And this is where kind of all the magic happens. So first, we're going to look for a file that ends in CFG. You can see that there's a file that ends in CFG. It'll import that, read that, and then add that. Then we need to check what platform is the player on. So we're going to check Windows Editor or Windows Player. Then it's going to be standalone Windows 64. If we're on Android, it'll set it to Android. And the reason why we do this is we want to check which file we want to actually load. Is it the Android one or is it the Windows one? Then once we know, we're going to load all the files within that folder. And we're going to look for anything that ends in JSON. And the reason why we're doing that is we're trying to find that catalog folder. So in this case, you see the catalog is the only JSON folder in here. Once we find that, we're going to open up the content catalog and read everything into memory. Then what we want to do is we want to find and replace that local file name with the mod directory name, which we're going to get using this path.get file name of the mod path. So what's that going to do? That's going to take whatever the name of this file, in this case, it's two sets of numbers, and it's going to replace that load path with that local file name. And now we can dynamically change the load path at runtime. And finally, we need to actually get the addressable key so we can load the addressable. We can do this by using the load content catalog async, using that content catalog path. Then we can await the load content catalog async dot task and get the result. And we're going to actually use the map label so that we can find all the map content in that catalog. Once we've done that, we can look at the locations at the zeroth index. Since there's only going to be one scene in my addressable, I know that I just need to check for the zeroth index. And we look for the location at the zeroth index dot primary key. And this is the thing that allows us to load the map in. Finally, once I have that key, I can use this load unload scene to load that addressable. If we come down here, we have the unload async. But more importantly, we have the load scene async, which is going to go look at the map data and find that addressable key and load that map additively. And we can save all that information for later so we can unload it. Finally, let's talk about script references. In Unity's addressables, if you have two scripts with the same name in the modder and in the actual Unity project, the variables from the mod project will be carried over into the real game. So what does that mean? Well, as you can see here, I have a project impulse weapon spawner with a bunch of variables set. And all of this information will be carried into my actual game. But if we take a look at the script, as you can see, it's pretty empty. There is no actual logic in here. It's simply just the class name and all of the variables within it. So essentially, if you have the same scripts in both projects, the variables from the addressable will be carried over into the real project, allowing the modders to customize your game even further. And that's pretty much it. That's how you add mod support to your Unity project using addressables. I haven't talked about content delivery. You can use things like Steamworks, or in my case, I use mod.io to deliver that content to your players. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Discord. And if you enjoyed the content, feel free to subscribe and wishlist Project Impulse on Steam.